So, okay, we can start now. Um, I would like to welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Lenard Pitts. Um, I'm the virtual program manager with Black Girls Code. Um, we're excited about this opportunity that we have today with uh, Houston Community College. Um, and we want to present to you Girl Power in STEM. Um, it's, it's an amazing opportunity for our participants to be able to learn uh, some of the uh, career paths that you could possibly have and gain some inspiration. And we're so excited to have you join us this afternoon, especially on a Saturday. And um, we would like to welcome you. And this is a space that you can ask questions, but um, we were going to have a selected time for that, but we're excited to have you. Thank you. So, uh, good afternoon. My name is Maya Dronovo, and I'm the Entrepreneurial Officer at Houston Community College, and I want to welcome you to Girl Power in STEM. So, on behalf of the college, I'm thrilled to welcome each of you to this incredible event where you'll be hearing from four amazing women. These women are trailblazers, they're pioneers, they're leaders, and they're simply remarkable. And each of you have the ability to be a leader, to be a change maker. And for that, you must get your education because that's how you advance and gain the skills to make a difference. And of course, how you can use your girl power. So welcome everyone. And now I'm gonna hand it over to the amazing Grace Rodriguez who will be your moderator. Thank you so much, Dr. DeNovo. And thank you, Houston Community College, Black Girls Code, and SCORE Houston um, for hosting this today. We're so, so excited to share some of these amazing women's stories with you and to encourage you to, to uh, look for careers in STEM. So I'm Grace Rodriguez. I'm the CEO and Executive Director of Impact Hub Houston. We are one of over 100 Impact Hubs in over 55 countries around the world that support entrepreneurs who are working on solutions related to the Sustainable Development Goals. And pretty much anything that's good for people and planet is a sustainable development goal. Um, some of these beautiful people that you can see on this slide are part of our launch team. And we are um, very passionate about making sure that we have an inclusive and equitable entrepreneurial ecosystem. With that, I am so honored to introduce the panelists for you today. Um, the first will be Mrs. Landy Spearman. And then we'll hear from uh, Dr. Lalitha Raman and then Dr. Monique Humphrey. And I'll introduce them with more detail uh, before they speak. Um, but just to let you know, if you, are, if you have any questions, please look at the bottom of the screen where the Q&A button is, click on that and enter your questions there. And then we'll answer that during the Q&A session. Um, so again, we wanna address the issues that you care about and we wanna make sure that we answer your questions. So please share them in the Q&A. And speaker is Mrs. Landy Spearman. She's the, a chief change officer and helping leaders change the way they approach growth, disruption and innovation. I first met Landy um, through a lot of the work that she was doing with uh, different startups and entrepreneurs across the startup and tech ecosystem. She is um, an amazing woman who wants to make sure that people have the mental health support, the, in the intellectual support, the peer and network support that they need to start and grow a thriving te tech startup or any kind of small business. Um, so with that, Landy, would you like to go ahead and Sure thing. Hello. Good afternoon. Okay. I'm just making sure that my clicker works and it does. Oh, let me take off this glasses. I have been looking forward to this. Hello. Thank you, Grace, for that warm introduction. Hola, buenos dias. Como estas? Mi nombre es Linda. My name is Landy Spearman. And I went back and forth just a little bit for you there to show you that when I am showing up, as a diverse woman, as someone who is here for you, as someone who is you, I am you. Um, I, I wanted to be able to really make sure that you were clear that you can connect to someone who looks like me because I see you in me. I'm gonna share a little bit about myself in pictures. And the reason why I'm sharing in pictures is because part of being a data scientist is that we use visualization. We tell stories, we tell stories about data um, visually. And so I want you to be able to see that, see yourself, see the possibilities. You get to be whoever you want to be in this. So earlier this year, before COVID, there was something that I attended called the, um, there was a conference that I attended. And I got a call about this conference 
And um, it surprised me because see, I have a background in real estate. Um, you may have heard of this city called Chicago where that's where I'm originally from. And um, when I made a decision to move to Houston, Texas, which is where I am now, I never in a million years would have thought of the day that I was called to speak in Las Vegas because Las Vegas is one of the biggest stages in this country. Well, the reason why I was called what had nothing to do with my background in real estate. It had nothing to do with the reason why I originally started going to school and pursuing this, this thing called uh, a multi-million dollar business. Um, it had to do with the fact that I was really able to connect with other people who were trying to figure out the same thing, leadership. And so you see me there in the red dress, raising my hand, speaking to a group of leaders about generational change, about some of the things that we are facing right now today between generations. You might identify yourself as a Gen Z. Uh, I am a Gen X. And there are millennials that I have who are siblings and sisters and brothers of mine. And um, my parents are boomers. And so when we talk about the different ways that we can connect intergenerational change, that's what they wanted me to talk about. And they were a group of real estate brokers, but they didn't want me to talk about real estate. So what I was able to do was apply the fact that when I was growing up, there were eight different businesses that my family started. Eight eight businesses that my family started before I even went to college. And so I brought that information, that knowledge, that experience, I brought that to the table. And that's what I shared there in Vegas. To the right, you see AABE, that is the, Americ the American Association of Blacks in Energy. So I attended a hackathon, which you're gonna hear more about today uh, at the end of this session. I totally invite you to attend. Why? Because I do not have a STEM background. I didn't start off in uh, math and science and engineering or technology. I didn't start there, but I am able to take the information that I learned about people and about change. And I was able to apply that to this hackathon where we all came together with different ideas and we worked to solve some of the biggest problems in energy oil and gas, the lights, the sun, everything that we're dealing with, the pollution, what's in the air. And it was such a great experience. So I definitely encourage you to attend. At the bottom left, you see a group of people who may be about your age. This was here at the ION right here in Houston. You see, we are building a center for innovation. What is that? It's a place where people are coming together whether they be in a technology field or background, a data scientist, a cybersecurity person, um, a business owner, entrepreneur like me, and they're coming together. Well, I was asked to facilitate a class of some of the smartest people in Houston, Texas. Well, at least that's what I think, because they showed up and we had such a great workshop. But guess what we worked on? We worked on that same thing that I worked in Vegas, leadership development really understanding that it's really cool and wonderful to have all of these technical skills, but it is so critical to understand who you are as a person, who you are as a woman, who you are as a young lady, how, you're, how you show up and how that impacts others. How when uh, you're working with a guy or someone who's a, a different race or, or ethnicity or speaks a different language, how do you interact with them? That's a part of what we learned in our innovation challenge. And down at the bottom where you see these 40 women, I was recently selected just a few weeks ago, as a matter of fact, to be a part of uh, share the mic and share the money. I know you all know about money, right? So when you think about share the mic and share the money, there were 40 women entrepreneurs who were selected to do business with big companies. So I used to work with uh, Kraft. Anybody love macaroni and cheese? I used to work for that company. And so when I was called later in life, um, as the entrepreneur that I am for Organized Shift, I was called to be a part of this, uh, this collaboration of companies who wanted to do business with black female business owners. Can you believe it? I was called out for such a good reason and a good cause. And some of these business owners, oh my gosh, some of the sharpest, smartest women um, in Houston, Texas, and we got an opportunity to connect with corporations like waste management. You all heard of waste management, right? Well, they handle our trash and recyclables and be able to present my business to them. 
it was such an amazing experience. So that was just a few weeks ago, as I said. All right, so uh, you're seeing a couple more pictures and a couple more um, points in which I'm sharing with you. Again, I told you about data and telling a story. So you see at the top left where there was another di diverse group of students, people who look like you and I from all different parts of Houston, Texas, who came together for this innovation challenge. And what they ended up doing at the end of the challenge, it was a semester long, all high school students, what they did was they created a prototype, a real idea, a real process. And I'm gonna put this on so you can see one of the things that they did was created. I don't have it yet because it's still being made, but you know how we have ready maps now? They created the clip. See how my glasses fogged up? I was trying to give you a demonstration to show you how people who were in school, in high school, just like you, created a device so that my mask and my glasses didn't get fogged up. Why? Because they created a clip, something out of a, a solution, out of a problem that needed to be fixed. I just showed you this whole demonstration, took off my earring and everything, and we're still going. Why? Because I wanted you to see that you can put your mind to any and everything that you want to do. Because the students that you are seeing on this picture here, that's who created this device. A little bit of clip, a little small thing that they can make millions and millions of dollars because they use innovation and applied it to what uh, problems we're currently facing. At the bottom left, you see Grace in that picture, along with some of Houston's uh, finest ecosystem leaders in technology. Um, there are, there's a variety of things that we do. I know you have someone from EA Sports, if any of you all play with Sims. I know my daughter plays with Sims. I have a, a 14, almost, no, 15 year old. Sorry, don't, tell, don't get me Skyla. Um, who loves Sims, and so EA Sports is connected to that. So it's great to be able to see on the back end, wait a minute, what? I get to code, I get to learn how to create my own Sims. I don't just have to watch on YouTube and figure out how to play. I can also create something for myself. So I wanted to share that picture with you so that you can see some variety in technology as well. And then you see my uh, newest employee who is India. Andy started with me a couple years ago and is still in uh, school. She's a, a senior now at the University of Houston. And India came back and she said, you know, Miss Landy, she said, I've never learned, never learned as much, I've never been developed and learned so much as I did when I worked with you. Mm -hmm. And so she came back while she's attending school, while she's a leader in several organizations, while she is full-time, she's away from home, and she is working within our cor corporation. So I just wanted to show you a variety of who you get to be. Last couple of slides here. One is us just having some fun. So I did this vision board party. I don't know if you all have ever attended a vision board party, but they're one of my favorite things. And I attended the vision board party as the facilitator. And what we did was instead of just putting together pretty uh, glitter and stickers and cutting out pieces of a magazine to talk about some of our biggest goals, because it's really good again to visualize them. I told you that's something that's very important. We also talked about what that means to you, the person, and how you don't have to do it by yourself. So often as women, we often think we gotta show up perfect we got to have our lips on right, our hair a certain way. We have to show up with everything all together. And what I encourage you to keep in mind and remember is you don't have to do it alone. And you for sure don't have to do it perfectly. And so we had a lot of fun during that vision board party session. And so you're just catching some of the pictures there. Now at the bottom right was when I was in Indianapolis earlier, well, about, eight, about eight, eight, nine months ago now. I was the speaker for a national conference and we talked about LinkedIn and I help people with their LinkedIn profile. You are not too young, start a LinkedIn profile. And I say that because I know you all know about TikTok. I know you know about probably IG, right? Well, LinkedIn is when you think about what do you wanna be when you grow up? What I coach people on and make sure that they're clear on is you don't have to wait until you're grown up to do that. You can do it now. 
you can walk in the experience of yourself now. Remember, I told you a couple of slides ago when I was speaking on that stage in Las Vegas? Well, I just said that I was gonna start speaking last year in 2019. So in order to get to be a speaker on one of the biggest platforms in the United States of America, I had to walk into the experience of myself speaking. My first couple speaking engagements, I didn't do it perfect, but you better believe on my LinkedIn profile, I put speaker, why? Because I can show up doing the work. That's exactly what I'm encouraging you to do. The last one there is another conference that I was just uh, a facilitator for, which was a virtual girls event called Girl Boss Up. And we talked about that mental health and that well-being and that self-care and a reminder that self-care is not just getting your nails done and hair done. Self-care is truly taking care of yourself. It's such a stressful time right now. You're dealing with a lot potentially. You might not see your friends. When you go to the grocery store, you might have to wear a mask. It's tough. That's real. I'm telling you what I'm really dealing with too. And at the same time, remember what I said. You don't have to do it alone. The fact that you just showed up here today, I am so excited that you are here. This is a quick synopsis, a summary page of my family, some of the things that I do, the school that I went to, Go Blue, Organize Shift is my company name. I also created a company, I brought those, Landy & Co. You can start off, it can just be you. You get to choose who you want to be. I take self-care and do yoga, I run, I love climbing mountains. If you can believe it, I love climbing mountains. We didn't have mountains in Chicago. So I love greenery and being out in the sun in the open. And then the bottom left picture, you might be able to see my family. That, as the oldest of five, is us in Paris. Was that last year? The year before. Right before it burned. The reality is we got a chance to experience that together. All of my siblings, my husband, Skyla, who I mentioned to you, and my son, we were, and my niece, um, Layla, were all in Paris, France. And I tell you, every time we jumped out of the sprinter, they thought we were celebrities or a basketball team or something. Why? Probably because we were black. But the really reality is, nope, we're not celebrities. We are people who are walking in the experience of ourselves. You get to show up and be whoever you want to be. Being connected to things like this, Black Girls Code, learning, getting your education, focusing. I know that I love my song. Um, I, there's a couple songs that I love, and I'm going to say it by Cardi B and Megan um, and Ariana Grande. I know all the songs. But I also know that being able to learn about who you are first and make decisions for you first is the key. I want to leave you with this. Black girls who have experienced generational poverty may lack the knowledge, access, and resources to break those chains and provide a better future for their family and their communities. Let me say it to you like this. When I told you that I was from Chicago and we had all those businesses, sometimes we had to make a decision. Do we keep the lights on at the house or the lights on at the store? We didn't start off rich. Still not rich to this day. We're rich in love. We're rich in confidence. We're rich in being a family. And I can tell you, it ain't always perfect. Yeah, I said ain't. And I can tell you when I lost both of my parents at 57 years old, back to back, and I had two siblings still in college and I was trying to figure it out. I was trying to figure out what it looked like for me to keep going. I knew that what my parents gave me, the knowledge and the resources that they gave me, I had to step up and get the education. I had to step up and get that scholarship. And I had to break the chains of poverty for my family for a better future. I encourage you to do the same. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that inspiring story, Landy. Uh, one of the things I, I heard from you is uh, you don't have to be in tech or start in science to have a career in tech. 
and to pursue your curiosity, to show up in spaces that you might not initially feel comfortable in, but become comfortable in them. And th that curiosity can lead you to your passion. It can lead you to new opportunities. Um, it can lead you to having a more fulfilling, well-rounded kind of life. And pursue, um, yeah, pursuing new, uh, new ideas and opportunities is really, and also building your network. All of those young women who were involved in the hackathons that you've been involved in, I know that they can now reach out to you if they need um, advice or support or want to get connected to more people within um, the, the tech or STEM ecosystems. So th thank you so much for inspiring us. Uh, next is Dr. Lalitha Raman. As you can see from her education and research experience, she's incredibly accomplished. Um, from getting her bachelor's in physics in India to her master's in science and accounting, and then a PhD in biophysics. Um, Dr. Raman also gives back as a mentor for, uh, sc through SCORE Houston, and I'm so excited for her to share her story with you as well. Dr. Raman? Yeah, thank you for giving me this opportunity to meet with everybody and kind of talk about what we want to do. Young people, how do we go about, you know, where do we go? So what is, you know, why it's very important for young people to work with, learn, that's what it is. I have a passion to learn from what you can see. I've been going to school forever, it seems like, you know. So what do we do? I am a volunteer with SCORE. A SCORE is a national organization helping small business. Every day we meet young people coming up. They have the great ambition to do something. One, maybe they have some skills that they want to, to provide, either a product or a service. Many of them come back because they feel like there is a need in this particular society for us to give back, to help people, you know. So that's what we are looking for, you know. Forward. Okay, what am I saying? I'm telling you, you need to dream big, big, because when I was young and I thought, you know, when everybody's talking about Generation X, baby boomers. I'm way, way, way past all that, you know. I came as a refugee in after World War II when I was a young girl with nothing. So we had to struggle even to go to school, college for years, you know. So I had a great dream that I wanted to do, be in science. I want to study science. So that's what I think all of you should be now looking for. You need to see, you have to have an education. You have to have that science background because everything you do, your little computer that you use, your hand phones that you use, you go home, anything in the house now, you know, if you have an appliance, somebody can repair it remotely. Why? Because they're all connected by technology now. So that's why it's important for you to understand where we are going. It's very important for you to understand that technology is here with, to, with you. And why we need is women, girls should not give up because we are as capable as anybody else, you know. We can achieve. And that's what I think. Never give up. Be successful, you know. There are so many good business leaders, you know. You see that Jack Wells said, you have to create that vision. You have to have that dream somewhere. I want to do this. I want to be there, you know. Have a vision, you know. Think about it. And then once you get the vision, that's your idea, your goal for you to go. So, <clears throat> and you need to be, if today you have some failure, don't give up. Go back. Go forwards, you know. Drive up. Keep going, you know. And I just wanted to make this one small thing about Malala. Many of you might have heard about her. She was a young girl in Afghanistan, Pakistan border and was the place where there was war. She being a girl, they said, why does she need an education? She doesn't need to go to school. And she, oh, she got shot when she was riding a bus. And here she came back and she went back to school went back and her goal was to get education for girls in those countries 
you're thinking about where women don't have any right but here we have the opportunity you can be anything you want you know and that's why i think she's a very good example for you to keep in your mind that at 17 she won the nobel peace prize why because she wanted to give the girls the opportunities to study her goal was to get everybody that opportunity you know so I already said women are as capable as men and I gave you an example of artificial intelligence every little thing I'm able to talk to all of you today because of the technology that's there you know this remote working face to face was great but now we don't have the chance but still that doesn't stop us you know we haven't stopped for the last six seven months score has gone on and on we have so many webinars so many clients we have helped you know we have helped a lot of businesses that are struggling why because you have that perseverance that that's the same thing you need to have perseverance that you are going to win you know and technical field is always getting a better paying job why my money is so important for me believe me money is important you know i'm not saying that is the only thing but it does get you where you need to go you need that little bit of help that little bit of push from money and women are have the greatest advantage a friend of mine said when i told him i was going to make this presentation he said do you remember the old proverb i said what he said the english proverb the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world you know rules the world remember we have such great leaders we have had chief ministers everything you know so you are going to be the role model for all the future generations coming for the little kids if you are in school you're going to teach them so what do we have just think i just wanted to give this as an example for you you know a lot of times we don't even understand how come that women are not in science no that's not true women have been in science for ages you know they have found a passion for it in science we have 20 women that have got nobel prize in science and guess what mary, mary curie she was a pioneer in physics and chemistry the only person who got two Nobel Prizes in physics and chemistry, two women, many, many years ago, you know. Then you look at Corey, she was again in Madison and Hodgkin's chemistry, you know. You can go down and look at the list of all the women and what they have done. It should be an inspiration for you. You may say, STEM, we are thinking of science. But I'm not going to forget that women are great writers. Toni Morrison was a great writer. Pearl Buck, you know, great writers. So we have all these women that have got awards in Nobel Prize for literature. And then how many people have got peace prizes? I just talked to you about Malala. I'm sure many of you have heard about Mother Teresa. She did such noble work, help people that needed help, you know. So here we go. We have so many people. And then we have people that have, you know, Jay Williams. She was so much upset about landmines that were killing people. So she was a pioneer in trying to get that. So remember all these women. I'm giving you this example for you to think of them. Have one as your role model and go forwards with it. Look what happened in space program. Sally Wright, first astronaut, you know, whoever thought they're going to have a woman astronaut, you know. And we had the first aviator woman who flew across the Atlantic, Amelia Earhart. She flew across the Atlantic. Who never thought you can fly a plane, you know. Imagine a lady flying a plane across the great ocean, Atlantic Ocean. Then we have so many people that have got awards in poetry, fiction, drama. I'm not saying that this is not important. Arts are also a way of expressing yourself, getting your idea across, to get the idea that you can do a better world, you know, you can build a better world. So that's where writers and film directors, they all play a great part in bringing us a new life, you know. But... I think Lenny Shaw talked a little bit about women in business. Don't forget them. 
There are 11.6 million businesses that are owned by women right now. I'm talking about from the SBA statistics, you know. So you can be a pioneer. You can start your own business. You can do it. And don't forget, we have women in accounting, engineering, pharmaceuticals. They have been there <clears throat> for many, many years. And we have had great politicians that have been there. Here are some of the women that have been in business. Look at this, Kraft Foods. Everybody, we never think that there was a lady that was leading up, you know. Then we have TJX companies, Pepsi Cola, woman. General Motors, she's leading. She's one of the leaders of the motor company, you know, right now. Then we have Abbott Laboratories, you know. Uh, pharmaceutical, Bristol Myers, Eli Lilly, Pfizer. These are all pharmaceutical companies. And these are women that have led. So you can start now. You can think of something that you want to cure. You want to find the medicine. You want to find the technology for it. So here are some of the simple examples of products that have been invented by women. Windshield wipers. You never thought that it was done by a woman when you're riding your car. Coffee filter, you know, olden days, you just poured water on the coffee and let the grind sit at the bottom. Coffee filters, wonderful. Disposable diapers, anybody that has a little baby knows what that is. Medical syringes, smartphone attachments, water purification system. You know, you know, we just heard that the water got contaminated with an amoeba that was eating up the brain and the poor young boy died. He was only six years or seven years old. So we can avoid these kind of things with the better environmental thing, cleaner water, cleaner air. And I think women will be great environmentalists because they care. They care about what's happening now. They care about what our future is going to look for, it, you know. So this is what women can do. So that's what I think. I want you to think about STEM science, technology. Don't be scared just because something you did today it didn't work out. Don't worry, you can work it out. I did a, P a PhD in physics, you know. How can that be? If you say that, people will be walking away. Physics, my God, you know. So it always gives you a help. When you go to a science field, it gives you a way of thinking. You know? It gives you a systematic approach of getting to the end product, you know. You can pour in different solutions and get the right answer, you know. It also trains you to investigate what is it wrong. Like, for example, now with the COVID, I'm sure there are a lot of scientists, women scientists working on that, you know. So the Landy talked about this people that found the mask with a little clip on it so that you will be more comfortable wearing one and not being feeling like, oh, what is this I'm wearing? It's uncomfortable. So see, they solved the problem. They, they knew that they need to do something for it, you know? So it gives you a good idea and it gives you the, the freedom and confidence because you feel like, hey, I have done this today. I can go the conclusion so science and technology helps you to go that route you know a lot of us do it every day you know we go somewhere we have our pathway done we cook something we already have the ingredients ready so it's the same idea you set a goal i want to do this today then you find the methodology to get there you know and then the result gives you the confidence for you to go on to more complex problems you know so i think all of you that are here today and listening to it please i want you to start thinking about what you want to do where you want to go i gave you lots of examples choose your field and and have one person as your start to think about you know the north star leads us to olden days when people used to navigate they didn't have maps or machines or phone they used to look at the stars and they used to say oh that star we need to go in that direction the same thing keep your star ahead of you and navigate your path okay thank you for giving me the chance to talk to you Thank you so much, Dr. Raman, for so many inspiring examples of women in, in technology and STEM. Um, if you would like to 
meet more women or find who you who could be your mentor or somebody that you aspire to be there's an organization called Anita Borg it, I put the link in the chat it's a n i t a b dot o r g and they have scholarships for young women for students to to participate in their conferences but it's a good way to meet more people who are in STEM who you can connect with today and speaking of that our next panelist is Dr. Monique Humphrey and she is um, the great transition combining business and um, STEM careers with a Doctor of Management and a Master of Science. Um, so without further ado, Dr. Humphrey, would you like to take it away? Sure, thank you, Grace. Uh, well, first of all, I wanna say hello to each and every one of you. I'm so glad that you all are able to join us today. Um, I, I have the pleasure of serving as the president of Houston Community College Northeast. And today I wanna to share with you a few things about uh, my background, my story, and why your voice matters and why you should consider a career in STEM. I had the benefit of having uh, grown up in a close-knit family. I had two loving parents who really encouraged me in every way. They helped me to believe that I could be anything. They never limited me in my beliefs. They didn't even restrict me to gender roles. I remember when I was this age, um, coming home from school one day, coming home from kindergarten, and my father asked me what I learned in school. And I was excited to tell him about what I learned in school. And he stopped me. He said, I'm not talking about what you learned in class. I'm saying, what did you learn about the world? And I paused because he caught me completely off guard. He explained to me that uh, everyone, if you wanted to be taken seriously, you needed, to, you needed to know about the things going on in the world, current events. What he did was created a news junkie. I still have a love affair with the news. Uh, but as part of that process, Every day when I came home, he would ask me what I learned. We would talk about the news. We would talk about current events. He did many things. He created so many uh, wonderful memories for me now. Uh, as I think back on those days, uh, he also helped me to formulate my voice. He helped me to express my feelings and express my stance on things. We argued, we debated. Uh, but he helped me to see that my voice mattered. And I didn't realize just how important and precious that was until later on in life. Another critical uh, piece of having supportive parents was having the best cheerleader in the world. My mother, Juanetta Caldwell, was the absolute best cheerleader than anyone could have. She believed in me. She gave me verbal affirmation. She invested in me. She helped me pursue every extracurricular thing that I could think of so I could find my spot. But also my mother was an entrepreneur, but she constantly made sacrifices or I consider them investments in my future. Uh, she made sure that I, she put me in the best schools possible. Uh, she um, put, was proactive and put me on the waiting list uh, for campus school. And I remember one of my most fond memories of elementary school uh, was being at campus having rocket day, working on our rockets, launching our rockets. Mine actually went off. It wasn't the highest, but it, it was in the top running. I was always a competitive child. Uh, but what I learned from campus school was it was okay to fail and it was okay to explore. And they made science and math fun. When I uh, went to high school, I decided that I was going to go, yeah, I, I'm giving all, all the pictures. Um, I decided that I was uh, wanted to go to an Ivy League college. So at the time I did my research, I went to the library. We didn't have the internet back then. That's how old I am. And so uh, I looked at all the research materials. I talked to the librarians and I found out that to go to a, to be competitive and be considered for an Ivy League, I needed to take the most rigorous math and science courses as well as at least four years of a foreign language, preferably in Latin. So I took three years of Latin, that's all my high school had, and then one year of French, and then I took all of the math and science, calculus, physics, everything uh, that I could take to prepare me for uh, a career. Uh, well, pre pre prepare me to be able to um, be uh, selected into a selective research institution. Uh, I mentioned that my mother invested in me. She, she took all of my um, interest seriously. I told her that I was interested in computers and I wanted to learn the program. So this was the first computer that she purchased for me. And so I decided, you know, I love Mad Libs as a kid, so I decided to program Mad Libs. So I would entertain my friends at lunchtime at the, in the cafeteria. I'd have them, and I, you know, Mad Libs, it's probably before your time. 
uh, but I, I would ask them for an adjective or a noun, and then I'd uh, type it in. I, I taught myself how to use BASIC, uh, how to program in BASIC, and so we would come up with stories. So that was my inner nerd coming out. I wasn't comfortable expressing my inner nerd at the time, but I, I didn't even realize just by doing these Mad Libs, my inner nerd was showing, but it, it was on full display. And then uh, I wanted to get more serious with it, so I had her buy me a more powerful computer. And this was my first real computer, and it was my, well, it was actually my second computer, my TRS-80. And I uh, worked with this so much, I, uh, you see the, com uh, the cassette player there. That's where I stored my programs, believe it or not. So I taught myself how to uh, program on a deeper level. Uh, I design programs where we could where I could uh, play songs so I would spend hours and hours working on my musical creations I've always had a love for music but I, this was when I first experienced a state of flow and this helped me later on in life when I was trying to figure out my career I was trying to I, honestly at that point I was trying to figure out what career would allow me to make the most money that's what I was thinking it never occurred to me that programming could be a real career because I saw it as something fun that I did uh, here you'll see, uh, this is a list of classes that we would recommend that you take if you're interested in a path as a software developer or as a data scientist. And we'll share these slides so you don't have to worry about it, but I just wanted to make sure that you had the same information if you were interested in a similar career. Um, I, I fulfilled my dreams. I was accepted into a selective R1 or research institution. And um, it was there that uh, I majored in engineering. And for the first time in my life, I hit a roadblock. Up until that point in my life, everything that I had tried, I had been successful at. Uh, but at this university, I felt isolated and alone. It was a, a predominantly white institution. And there were eight black engineering students. And I often felt invisible. My uh, professors would ignore me most of the time or when they did look at me, it was to look at me as if I didn't belong there. And after a while, um, I, I hit a brick, wall, a brick wall. Even though I felt I had done everything to prepare and I was studying as hard as I could, I found myself on academic probation. And so I, was, I, I felt like Humpty Dumpty. I couldn't figure out what to do, how to put my life back together. But this, this is where a sponsor came in, uh, my mentor. Her name was Mary C. Scales. She was actually the first black professor uh, at Middle Tennessee State University. She integrated the faculty and she was a math professor. And uh, she worked with me and uh, when I told her what was going on because uh, I had uh, won a scholarship in the city and I had to report on my grades and I told her how I was doing and she would not let me give up on myself. I was starting to doubt whether I was even college material because I had hit my first real serious stumble uh, not to stumble, my first wall, uh, but she reminded me of who I was and what I was capable of, and she would not let me give up on myself. She helped me to uh, pick myself back up, and in pure Mary C. Scale style, she made me square my shoulders, back up, and get back on the road, and uh, remember what I was here to do. And so at that point, I transferred to Middle Tennessee State University, where I had more support, uh, and there is where I found my tribe. I uh, found friends. It was another predominantly white institution, but yet uh, the African Americans were about 10% of the population there. I quickly found myself involved in student life. I became president of the African American Student Association and vice president of the NAACP. In that time, in addition to being an IT major, um, I, I was really coming to uh, find the things that I loved and helping to find my voice. By finding my tribe, I found people like me. One thing that I realized, every day we would walk in our student center, the KUC, and there was a 600 pound bronze medal uh, plaque up on the wall. And uh, that was uh, in honor of Nathan Bedford Force, who was our mascot. Uh, when I asked people about it, and uh, they would say that Nathan Bedford Force was this great military strategist, but when I dug a little bit deeper, I found out he was also the uh, founder of the KKK. So me and my friends, uh, we were audacious enough to believe that we could uh, uh, create change. So we organized a sit-in in the president's office, the president of the university, and we requested that that plaque come down and that the, they change the mascot. And guess what? We were just crazy enough to believe that we could, and we did. 
they took that plaque down off of MTSU. I had to go back and find a, a yearbook from before I was there because it's no longer on the university. Uh, so in, in doing that, uh, as, yeah, as I was finding my voice and as I was uh, learning all of the foundational elements for my career as a software engineer, I was also figuring out that my voice mattered. And more importantly there, I found out that when you find like-minded people and you find your tribe, you can amplify your voice. So after I graduated, I became a software engineer. I spent the first 14 years of my life uh, coding, uh, learning, and uh, realized that that's the type of career where you have to always have uh, a spirit of continuous process improvement and lifelong learning uh, to remain relevant. And uh, I had the benefit of having a boss who believed in me. Uh, he saw something in me and he encouraged me uh, to spend extra hours. Uh, the workday was from eight to five. <clears throat> excuse me and he told me he thought I had what it took to be a, a manager so he said if I would come to his desk after five he was my boss he would show me the ropes of management so he believed in me and encouraged me and gave me the foundation to make the transition from being a software engineer to a, a leader of software projects and that set me on the path for my current role uh, one thing uh, that I want to share with you, I've talked to you about finding your voice, finding your tribe. I don't want you to feel like you have to be locked into stereotypes. Uh, oftentimes people feel like if you don't look like the people on the Big Bang Theory, you can't be in STEM. There's nothing farther from the truth. I don't look like them, but I had a wonderful career. And I, uh, the, ben the benefits of having a, a foundation in STEM is it, it teaches you the critical thinking skills and how to apply uh, logic and analysis that are helpful whatever you do with your life. I'm a college president now and those skills are wonderful to have. When I think about uh, how you amplify your voice, I realize that all of you, each one of you has a unique story. The great thing is, if you think about the things that matter to you, have you been impacted by COVID? Have you lost any loved ones? If, when you think about what you would do um, to make that different, right now, now more than ever before, we need a diverse set of people who can lead the next generation of STEM development. And so if you think about the things that have happened to you, the things that you care about, who better to lead new STEM efforts and new STEM research than you? Who better to lead research into um, health initiatives about your community than you? Uh, I'm giving you this um, encouragement now. There's, no, there's nothing uh, that you could do that would be more impactful than starting off with a strong foundation in STEM. It allows you to find your voice. It allows you to amplify your voice. And it allows you to bring your unique voice to the world. Uh, I found that uh, having a career in STEM, I felt so empowered, especially it, it gave me the opportunity to travel, travel globally. Uh, when I led those software projects, I led implementations across Latin America. I would not have had that opportunity if it hadn't been for my career choice. So I'm encouraging you that you have what it takes and uh, never forget that your voice matters. Uh, most importantly, I want to say, I want us to remain connected. Uh, I want to be your cheerleader, just like my mother was a wonderful cheerleader to me. I want to be a cheerleader for you. So please connect with me on Twitter at preeminent underscore MW. And I want to hear about what you choose to do and encourage you and support you in any way I can. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Humphrey, for sharing that really inspiring story and for having the courage to be very vulnerable with us. A lot of times people don't share their challenges, and so people who are watching tend to think, oh, it's for somebody who has resources, who already has a leg up, and like you said, looks like the people on the Big Bang Theory, but really anybody can, you know, can do it. Um, and I want to make sure, because we're close to the top of the hour, to answer some of the questions that um, the attendees have shared. Uh, one of them is, what language did you code in? Oh, uh, I started off, uh, again, my first language was basic, and then uh, I, we started transitioning. Uh, I started off with uh, .NET, uh, well, VB, VB then VB.NET, and so transitioning into object-oriented programming. Uh, that's where I, and then I transitioned into management, and so I led teams uh, with .NET programming. Thank you for sharing that. And I want to just let a lot of attendees know, too, that 
because so many languages evolve, for those of us who are farther in our careers and now have gone onto the business side of things, there are a lot more languages out there that might be more relevant to what you're doing today. One of the earlier questions, too, was for somebody who wants to go into data science, um, what kind of tools should they look at? And so I invite the rest of the panelists also to weigh in. Are there other tools um, for people who are interested in tech or, or who are interested in data that, that might be free online for them to, uh, or uh, in the physical world to um, tap into? Sure, and Dr. Humphrey, you may want to weigh in on this as well. Um, there are so many tools right now that are available because of COVID, because of the fact that there is a need for a diversity of perspective. And so there are many, many free resources. Um, if you want to go to uh, Black Compute Her, as all one word, B-L-A-C-K Compute, C-O-M-P-U, T E H E R, Black Compute Her. There's some information there specific to data science, um, specific to uh, young Black women being able to get connected to resources. I know some of these big companies um, that we may use. I mentioned EA Sports, they were doing some um, promotional things to help uh, folks get um, coding skills, Python, uh, what else? No. C, plus, like, like literally, to your point, there are so many options. Um, you can Google some of the universities right now are even offering courses online for free um, where you could just get that introduction to uh, data science, to cybersecurity, to uh, coding. Please tap into some of the resources. And I know there will be several that will be shared here. Lots that HCC is doing. I went back to HCC, um, even though I had all this experience myself. Um, I said, you know what, in order to be an entrepreneur, I need to stay current. So that's the reason why having two kids, a husband, a family, a business, um, and a career, I went back to school. So I'm always keeping my skills current, always going, um, seeking new knowledge and information. And thank you for making that point because ongoing learning, uh, ongoing learning, ongoing education is really critical. Like. You know, we were saying earlier that languages continue to evolve, new tools and technologies continue to evolve. Um, we've shared some links in the chat, so if you go into the chat, you'll be able to see that. And then afterwards, you know, we'll save this file, save all the resources that were shared, and then email them to you as well. Um, there's another question from the audience. What if you don't have the money to start? Yeah, How I was just going to address that, Grace. You know, a lot of people may think they don't have the money to go to a big university, and have to be there, be a resident and do all that. Best thing is start off at HCC. Nothing wrong going to HCC, you know, they have excellent teachers, they have excellent program. I, every time I walk into the Hayes campus and I look on the board, astrophysics class, you know, I want to go take the class myself, you know. So those kind of everything is available for you. Go there for the first year or two, because not only that it may be affordable, it also gives you a transition going from high school to college. Sometimes people have a little difficulty. So I always recommend do that transition. And after a year or two, you can go to any other university, transfer your credits, and that will be an excellent way to get started. And there are scholarships available, believe me. You just have to keep looking and finding the right. And if you go to the college and ask in their education department, they may even guide you to see what are all the opportunities available for you to go. Uh, thank you for that great promo. Um, I might be a little bit biased, but I would say the same thing. Uh, one other thing that I would want students to realize is they can take advantage of opportunities while they're in high school. One opportunity you have that I didn't have was dual credit. Uh, we, uh, as uh, Dr. Rahman said, uh, come to HCC after you graduate and complete the first two years of your gen ed requirements and, and transfer on if you're looking at a four-year degree. But also, I want you to take advantage of dual credit opportunities. Uh, we have some students uh, who have taken advantage of uh, dual credit um, opportunities, which is like an on-ramp to college. Uh, last year, we had over 500 uh, students uh, earn their high earn their HCC de degree before they earn their high school diploma. They earn their HCC diploma uh, degree the weekend before they graduated from high school. So you think about that. You graduate from high school at 18 and you are already ready to go to the university as a junior. You can't beat that. It's one of the best, most affordable options around, especially for those that are considering 
STEM careers, I would definitely recommend it. I would like to add one more, if that's okay, Grace. Yeah. Um, so regarding money, because, um, and I really spoke to this, I, I, I hope that you got, you saw from, from my humble beginnings, uh, we didn't grow up with a lot of money. There were seven of us, seven. There's a lot of people in my family. And so to make decisions, um, to, to make sacrifices, I had to choose, um, how, you know, do I get a job? I, I have responsibilities. I was, you know, very involved in school. So I showed you all my little card here with my name on it. And the reason why I showed you my card with my name on it is because I, I had to start somewhere. So that, that was then this, this thing now, right? This consultant, this, that I have evolved. Don't be afraid. I think Dr. Umfer spoke to this. Don't be afraid to, to make mistakes. Don't be afraid to try. There may be someone in your family who sees you. Stay connected to them. It may be a teacher. I still remember my third grade teacher, Ms. Howard. Third grade, I'm definitely far away from third grade. But I remember that teacher and the impact that she had on me. And I stay in contact with my teachers. One of the things that I do for my children, so I have a senior and a sophomore right now. So since they were, I believe, maybe in first and second grade, I've been getting recommendations from their teachers for them. So, hey, did, you know, you thought it's one thing to have a grade, but when someone knows who you are, can speak to your character, it makes a difference. And that is valuable. That's worth money. So when you're thinking about where do I start, start with you. It doesn't have to be outside of you. Start with you. What am I good at? I'm good at drawing. I'm good at painting. I'm good at speaking. I'm good at uh, listening. It can be whatever you're good at. I taught my children math and science through cooking. So guess what? They teach others cook math and science because of what they learn in cooking. They tutor other kids and get paid for that. So there's so many things that you can do that start with you. It doesn't have to be outside of you or because someone else said that's what you are, but get connected to someone who can kind of trust and, and help and guide you along the way as well. You know, there are other opportunities. Like if you even go to bigger universities, they do have work study kind of program where you can get a part-time job and work because, you know, everywhere you do have some administrative things that have to be done or even in the computer science uh, labs, you know, you have to do something or even in the lab, you can be a lab technician. When I came and did my PhD for four years, I had an assistantship and I worked in the lab with the professor, working on his project, helping him to go along with it, you know. That's how I came. Otherwise, I couldn't have come here to study. Same thing when I was in high school, because we were strapped for cash. And I was good at math. You know that, that I was good at math. So I was teaching younger kids who were seven and eight. They needed help in their classwork, you know. So I was teaching them. And I was getting paid for doing that, you know. And I was myself not even a high school graduate yet. So you can do that. There are opportunities you need to look. But I can also suggest, look at where there are other private enterprises offering educational grants, you know. And I'm sure that these days, they are there. You need to be only be persistent and look for it, you know. Learn your pers being persistent, starting with that, you know. The other thing I would ask and encourage everyone is to not be afraid to be vocal. Uh, the old adage is a closed mouth doesn't get fed. So sometimes you don't even know what resources are out there. But if you let the teachers uh, that you have relationships with know what your interests are, uh, it was uh, college professors who gave me recommendations, uh, who wrote scholarship recommendations. Uh, so sometimes they can connect you with other resources is all I'm saying. So mm -hmm. make sure that you let people know what you want to do. And when you express a desire, uh, you'd be surprised how you get connected to the resources that you need. Thank you. So what I'm hearing is connect and be, make sure that you're open to um, getting the help that you ask for. Because sometimes people just feel like, it, well, it's not for me. So definitely reach out, connect with your mentors, teachers, um, potential coaches, you know, and see how, um, let them know what you need and what you need help with. Uh, one resource that is available to you for free is the library. So there's um, the Houston, there's a, a tech, um, like a tech area. I know that they have a lot of the equipment there and they have classes on learning how to use like 3D printers or laser cutters. So make sure that you also use, take advantage of the library if you are able to. Um, we are at time. 
Um, and I wanted to make sure that Black Girls Code and Houston Community College are able to share some resources with you. So um, Kobe or Leonard, would you like to take it away? Yeah, I can. Um, hello, everybody. Um, yes, we wanted to promote our hackathon that we have coming up with um, General Motors. Um, it's going to be on October 23rd through the 25th. Um, it's an exciting uh, process. Uh, participants will be able to form into groups around a project. Um, and you'll be able to investigate a problem and create um, innovations, innovative solutions to it. And it's around um, concepts uh, grounded in Afrofuturism and, uh, as it relates to social justice. Um, and throughout this process, we will be able to have the, uh, the groups uh, come together with those um, uh, solutions and the group that be able to uh, possibly win that or present it, uh, they would do it at uh, October 31st and in front of uh, some special judges that we will have. So it's an exciting time. Uh, please feel free to uh, look, uh, click, well, look us up on Twitter or Instagram at Black Girls Code um, and you can find more information there. And we will be excited to see you at the for, for ages uh, 12 to 17. Thank you. And so the next thing is that the Climathon, it's a, a global hackathon around climate action. And you don't have to be a technologist to participate. It's really about designing ideas. As Dr. Raman was sharing earlier, the idea of what addressing a problem and having a process to develop a solution to it. Anybody, any age, um, as, as young, as old as you know you are, um, if, you're, if, you're, if you care about climate action, um, especially if you're interested in the Sunrise Coalition, please reach out to us or click on this link and then sign up to participate in the hackathon. And uh, also we have several uh, HCC uh, sponsored STEM activities coming up. Uh, here's a link for uh, additional information for our STEM programs at the college. Uh, a link for the DIT programs, our innovation and entrepreneur programs as well. So we have many people and resources available to help you. HCC has a very good engineering program that I have been part of before. And when you're looking at climate change, you know, what air, where else can you be? Because there you learn how, what is it the problem? How do you find the solution? You know, So do attend the climate thing because that is something all of us have to worry in the future. Thank you all again for participating in today's event. Thank you, Houston Community College, Black Girls Code, SCORE Houston, and Impact Hub Houston. Um, thank you, Mrs. Spearman, Dr. Lalitha Raman, and Dr. Monique Humphrey for speaking with us today. There is one final thing I wanted to share with you, and we've talked about so much optimism and so many opportunities that are available to you, but there is one thing that happens if you don't show up, and I'm leaving a link there. There's, there are issues that happen, there's racism and, and sexism that happens in the technology community when especially women of color do not show up and participate. Um, you'll, if you want to research it, look up artificial intelligence and racism or artificial intel intelligence and gender, and you'll find that how code bias can actually be coded into software or it's making decisions on behalf of people that are um, adding to more racism and gender um, discrimination in our society. So we really need you to participate. We need you to show up. You are the leaders of our future. And we, however we can help you, uh, make sure to reach out to us because we want to be better ancestors for the future that you inherit. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.